last few lessons, we looked at future value and how to calculate the future value of an investment or savings. In this lesson, we're going to look at present value. Present value will allow you to calculate what money in the future is worth now. So to get the present value of future money, we would basically work backwards on the future value calculation. This is called discounting. And you would discount all future clash, cash flows to the present point in time. Like the future value calculations, when you're calculating present value, you need to ensure that the time periods are all consistent. This means that you will need to divide an annual interest rate by the number of compounding periods in a year. The syntax for present value in Excel is equals PV and then in brackets rate, end periods, payment, future value and type. So the best thing we can do really to look at this syntax is hop over into Excel and look at a present value calculation. So as we mentioned, here we are in Excel and present value is calculated by discounting all expected cash flows to the present point in time. And in our example, let's say we want a 30,000 lump sum in 18 years time. And we want that lump sum for whatever reason. We may decide it's a retirement fund. We may decide we need that amount of money to put our child in college. So off we go down to our bank and we tell the bank we're going to need 30,000 euro in 18 years time. And the bank will go off and the bank will do their calculations and they'll come back and they'll say, well, I can give you an interest rate of 3% and I can compound over 12 years, but you're going to have to give me a lump sum and you're going to have to give me that lump sum now. So how much, of, how much is that lump sum? Well, you can use the present value calculation to work that out. So what we have here is we have our future value of 30,000, our interest rate at 3%. The bank is going to compound 12 times a year and it's going to be for 18 years. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the compounding rate. And the bank is going to compound 12 times a year. So the compounding rate is monthly. So we're going to divide the 3% by the compounding periods in the year. And that's going to give us 0 0.0025. Now, we also need to calculate the number of months because we have years here. We're going to, we need this money in years, but we need to get it into months. So we're going to multiply the 18 by 12 to give us the number of months. Now we're ready to do our present value calculation. So PV for present value, and it returns the present value of an investment. The total amount that a series of future payments or a lump sum payment is worth now. And what it's looking for first is the rate. So this is the compounding rate. Then it's looking for the number of periods. Well, we know it's 18 years or 216 periods. We're going to skip the payment amount, so we'll put in a comma. And our future value, we know what our future value is going to be, so we'll select the 30,000 as our future value, close the bracket, and hit enter. And you'll see there again that it comes up as a minus value. Now this minus value is actually correct because the direction of cash flow matters, and this is coming out of your pocket. So the present value to you is 17,494.23. So you would have to go down to the bank. You'd have to deposit this amount now at an interest rate at 3%, being compounded 12 times a year for 18 years to get a return of 30,000 euro in them 18 years. So that's present value. Let's now have a quick discussion on net present value and net present value analysis.